told the broadcast basically that, you know, him and Shanahan are speaking the same language and they're on the same page. And this is the best relationship that they've had and et et cetera. I'm going to just give you the floor. What was your thoughts on hearing that? Talk to me about where you think this relationship is. How do you think this relationship will grow during the season? And then ultimately, I think we're going to talk about something eventually, which is Garoppolo's future. But just talk to me about the what you felt when you heard that gra- a quote from Garoppolo. Well, I was really surprised. And, and the biggest reason is because remember where Jimmy Garoppolo came from. He grew up in the Patriots organization. The New England Patriots do not let their players say anything about anything, good, bad, or ugly. There have been times when Patriot players have publicly praised teammates and then gotten called out by the team for publicly praising a teammate. That's how tightly the Patriots like to keep their grip on their players when it comes to speaking with the media. Jimmy Garoppolo grew up in that organization. He grew up behind Tom Brady, who never says anything in the media. He knows, Jimmy Garoppolo, that is, knows how to answer questions without saying anything. He's done it for largely his entire 49ers tenure as well, except this year. This year, something is different about Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't know if he just doesn't give a bleep anymore or what, but it started with the freedom comments. He mentioned multiple times how he liked freedom, wanted freedom in this offense. He gave an interview with Tim Kawakami where he basically blew up Kyle Shanahan's spot. He told Tim Kawakami, He didn't want to come to training camp with the team this year. He wanted to stay in L.A. rehabbing. That's the complete opposite of what Shanahan said. Kyle said Jimmy can leave training camp if he wants. No, no, no. Garoppolo says the 49ers forced him to be here. So Jimmy is smart enough to not say anything, and he's saying things now, which I think is it's a change. And whenever anybody acts differently from a way they've always acted, I always wonder why. And so for for uh, Garoppolo to tell the broadcast team, that his relationship with Kyle has taken big steps and that they're now speaking the same language, I was stunned by because what's taken so long and what was the relationship like before those steps were taken? I felt like there was so much more meat on that bone that I wanted to be able to pick at because that's fascinating to me that something changed and yet Kyle and Jimmy supposedly think things are better now Yet Jimmy's like just throwing stuff out there like truth bombs left, right, and center. Right. And yeah, that was a lot, right? You you delved in a l- little bit with the Kawakami. I want to touch on that. But the first thing I want to talk about is the honesty from Garoppolo and him being forthcoming to me is quite interesting. Obviously, it's it's a little bit away from his personality. I do think that he also gets away with saying a little bit less, not only because of the Patriot way, because there's a few things about him that aren't truly Patriot way. For for example, if you ask Jimmy Garoppolo about his injury, he'll always answer. It's That's not true. really 100%. It's getting there. <laughs> no Patriot in the history of Patriots under Bill Belichick will ever respond to the injury question. There. there was the infamous Mac Jones presser most recently after his ankle. He was like, my ankle is getting better. I'm going to do everything I can to get back on the field. Mac, how's your ankle? My ankle is getting better. I'm going to do everything to get back on the field. Mac, how long do you think it's going to take? My ankle is getting better. He did this repeatedly. It was a little on to Cincinnati gig. And so Garoppolo is different from the Patriot way, where I do think he gets away with it. And I think it's an inherent thing in life is him being so good looking gives him an advantage because people expect less from him. If you're not as good looking a person, you have to impress people with what you have to say and your intelligence and stuff like that. Garoppolo automatically impresses people. And I think he gets away with that in some of these pressers too, right? You ask him a question and Jimmy hits you with the, I'm not going to answer this chin touch smile. And a lot of people (laughs) are satisfied with that. I don't think they would be satisfied with that answer from everybody else. So I do think he inherently says less because of that. Now with him talking, I thought this quote in and of itself, the quote itself is interesting, right? Because this is a question I had about Garoppolo itself. When you're this much, when you spend this much time in a scheme, this much time with one coordinator, one coach in one scheme, game planning, you know, different plays against different defenses, Garoppolo has basically seen all the different ways defenses try to attack the Niners offense. 
he's repped running the different plays the Niners run. There's not that many plays to it. They just run the same plays with different variations yep. and different window dressing to set up for each game. Um, not They're not memorizing, you know, like, 8 million different plays where one play the receiver runs, you got the X receiver running a post and then you have the concept side, which is some sort of flat route and with a slant and something like that. It's, they usually rep a lot of these plays where they have their core concepts and they work out of it. And Garoppolo to me still made a lot of mistakes. Like a guy that was still, you know, getting used to the system. It didn't feel like automatic that you feel with a lot of these veteran quarterbacks who have wrapped and had a similar system for so long. Usually you see a comfortability. Well, funnily enough, I finally saw that comfortability yesterday. The Panthers defense blitzes a lot. Phil Snow is creative with who blitzes. They get a lot of free rushers. They run a lot of zero coverage. Shanahan talked about it. It's one of the most exotic blitz packages that they're going to study for this year. Yesterday, Garoppolo had every answer for the blitz. He knew where to go every time they blitzed. He knew where to get the ball. He knew where his hot was. He made a couple of phenomenal throws down the left sideline, one back shoulder to Brandon Ayuk that was dropped, and then one to Tevin Coleman that was an absolute dot. I mean, he put it on him. It was a great catch, too, but it was a great throw, and it was very zero pressure on third and fourth. So he had these answers. And that's where now this quote that you just shared makes things so much more interesting because I'm watching the game and I'm seeing a quarterback who's maybe the most comfortable within knowing where to go with the football I've seen. And with Garoppolo, we've seen instances of it like that. 2019 against Hall on Halloween against Arizona at Arizona. I thought that was an example of Garoppolo looking like this. And to me, it's been a long time since he's looked like this. So you say that and then you say they're on the same page. I, I just ask what could have possibly changed? How did this change? And then you, you take it the level further with the Kawakami comment. Garoppolo clearly, from everything we've heard from him, from February to today, he was dead set on leaving the 49ers. He had ended his relationship with the 49ers. He didn't want to come back. He told Albert Breer after the Seattle game that it was Kyle's idea to suggested to bring him back. And then I think yep. Kyle said Lynch suggested it to him, but the 49ers were clearly more hell bent on having Garoppolo around, having him show up to training camp and do that little rehab circus. That was actually a circus during training camp for reporters to videotape Garoppolo for 10 minutes and then comment on practice. It was a bizarre PR situation. There's no other way to put that. Usually you don't want that kind of attention for your backup quarterback. Maybe they were trying to get that attention to muster up a trade market. I don't know what the actual prevailing details were. All I know is that there was a clear disconnect this offseason. It worked out for both parties today, but Garoppolo didn't want to be back here. And clearly the Niners did have some inkling that despite everything they said publicly, they maybe wanted to keep him around if that was the case. I totally agree. I And I said it. I've been, I feel like I've been saying it and saying it. And then everything I've said has come true in this one particular area, right? They either doubted Trey Lance's ability or they doubted his availability. One of those two things has to be true. If you look at everything they've done. And then we find out that Jimmy Garoppolo didn't even want to be in training camp. And the 49ers said, no, you have to show up. That just goes to show that it's true that they have some sort of that. Maybe it's, Maybe it's 1% doubt, but there is some sort of doubt there with the 49ers and Trey Lance. And the longer they've gotten to look at him, I feel like the more that they've realized that Jimmy Garoppolo needs to be around. And, and I'll put it this way, just for the sake of argument, let's just say I'm correct, right? Let's say the 49ers did yeah. have doubts about Trey Lance, whether you think it's 1%, whether you think it's 50%, whatever, would they have done a single thing differently than they did this off season? The answer is no. They would have done exactly what they did. So that just goes to show there's some sort of doubt there. What I want to know is, what was the conversation with Kyle, with Jimmy Garoppolo like? Whoever approached him, Lynch, right. Shanahan, whatever. Because if you've got your heart set on leaving, right? And you're like, I'm gone. I've said my goodbyes, whatever. We've I've left jobs before. When I left ESPN, they said, you know mm -hmm. what? Before you make your final decision, Let's meet. We'll have a conversation in that conversation. It was, Hey, what can we do to get you to stay? What do you, you know, can we do anything? What about this? What about that? So when the Niners approach Jimmy and they say, Hey, what do you, are you open to coming back? 
you've got a little leverage there if you're Jimmy Garoppolo, right? They're not coming to you for no reason. So what did Jimmy say in that conversation? Did he say, look, Kyle, I'll consider it, but you got to stop X, Y, and Z, whatever yeah. it was. But something happened in their relationship that's clearly different now because that's literally what Jimmy Garoppolo just told the broadcast crew. So right. something changed, and I would love to know what it was because it seems to be better now. You know, Akash Anavarathan tweeted uh, this morning, Jimmy Garoppolo has a big-time throw rate of 4.3%, which is the highest it's ever been with the Niners, and his turnover-worthy play rate is 2.4%, which is the lowest it's been since 2017. So something seems to be different now, and I'm going to keep my eye going forward. What kind of performances does Jimmy Garoppolo have? Does he start stacking these? And if so, does that all trace back to whatever this big step was that he took with Kyle Shanahan? And I, I will say this to expand. Um, the big-time throw rate and some of the things that we've complained about with Garoppolo's play in the past, while I think those are a reality that you cannot argue I, I think there are some people that would still argue against it and say, you know, the coach is a little rigid and stuff like that. And those are some people maybe um, uh, um, that are maybe connected with the 49ers, maybe on the 49ers, maybe play for the 49ers. So there are people who believe that. I, I don't know if that's true I, I personally, but that's those are there's rumors that way. Um, but the one thing I did want to add to that, right, is because you asked you asked the question, what changed? Um, to me, also, the thing about the Trey Lance doubt, I think a lot of people immediately hear the word doubt and the number three overall pick who they traded 30 first round picks for. They, he doesn't believe in him, blah, blah, blah. I think they absolutely believe in Trey Lance. I think that's inarguable. But there's also a realistic outlook on the NFL, no matter how much you believe in someone. Like tomorrow, Rob, I, I could think that you are the greatest real estate agent in the world. Even if you've never shown that, I could think that you are the single greatest real estate agent in the world. I would be stupid to let you individually without showing experience that you are the greatest real estate agent in the world. I believe to my core, you are the real greatest real estate agent in the world, but I would be stupid to buy a house from you without having some sort of contingency plan or some sort of making sure that everything is okay, as great as I think you are. And that's the reality of the situation. The Niners clearly are enamored with Trey Lance. They love Trey Lance. Rob is not saying that. What he's saying is that despite loving Trey Lance, they also understand the reality of the business, the reality of the situation, how good the roster is, the way they had to use him this year, which clearly to me showed that he's a quarterback they were clearly waiting to groom through this year. They talked about this offseason where they hoped the team could carry him early, and eventually through the season he kind of finds his footing, and maybe he plays better than Garoppolo by the end of the season. He wasn't really going to do that at the beginning of the season. All of those, they gave these little hints that maybe they weren't 100% they were ready for where he was at, but, you know, maybe where he was at was not today where they needed him to be. That doesn't mean he wasn't going to eventually reach that. And so because of that, I do think that conversation is relevant on why they brought Garoppolo back. And it's a real part of it as much as you might not want to like to hear that as a fan. And the question is going to remain because Jimmy Garoppolo is a free agent after the year and Trey Lance is coming back from an injury. What? happens beyond this year because essentially everything is kind of frozen in place. Trey Lance's development is frozen in place. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to make another run with this team, whether it's, you know, we don't know whether they make the playoffs or not. I think that they should make the playoffs, but we'll mm -hmm. see. And so we're going to be asking all of these same questions again once this season ends. It's slightly different because the Niners will have to compete with other teams for Garoppolo's services. But I'm not convinced he wants to go anywhere else, Vish. I really think that if he had his choice in a perfect world, he would see Trey Lance shipped off and he would be the unquestioned guy. But I think that Jimmy wants to stay in San Francisco. Yeah, and I'm not convinced that the team at this point wants Jimmy Garoppolo to go elsewhere. Yep. This team believes Jimmy Garoppolo is its quarterback. And that's that's a very dangerous thing in the NFL. 